In this short video, I'll be taking you through how to respond to the November 2022 question paper 2-2, IGCSE Geography paper 2 question with a, with a focus on the map skills. This is the first 20 marks of this exam paper. So the reason I produced this video is to show you how to complete this question in the exam. It offers you hints and tips on how to approach these questions. You can follow as you and complete as we go and make sure to practice by completing another past paper. So all the resources for this exam can be found in a link in the comments. And really, map skills are the same. The, the phrasing of the questions might be slightly different, but every map skills question that has been asked is more or less the same structure, asks more or less the same skills. So use this video and apply it to other videos, to other examples to help you. If you are completing other exam papers, I've got um, the rest of my videos can be found all the way back to uh, June 20, uh, sorry, November 2019. So please subscribe and share if you like, if you find them useful. So the map skills question, just to recap, is 20 marks out of a possible 60. It is compulsory. I recommend that you spend 30 minutes doing it. Nine times out of 10, there's a particular focus on settlement and or rivers, but they can ask coast or tourism questions. For this exam, you will need a protractor, a ruler, some pen a pencil and a sharpener, a rubber, and so, before you start the exam, it's really important you do the following. The first bit you need to draw is this on the map. It is a compass with its bearings. If you can draw a compass with all its particular bearings and direction, this will make the rest of the exam a lot easier. And I'll show you that when we come on to a direction question. As well, you need to identify the scale and contour lines with the intervals shown as well. That's, again, that's really important for questions that are often asked. And remember that if the scale is 1 to 25,000, that means that one centimeter is 250, on the map is 250 meters in real life. Another common scale is that when uh, one centimeter on the map is 500 meters in real life or one to 50,000. So make sure you understand what the contour line interval is and the scale. And if you think this is, it is helpful on around the map, you could do this. Okay, so although this is not on the map from the exam, to help you know where north, east, south and west is, around the map, you can label that on. OK, so the first question. Generally, nine times out of ten starts with you having to identify the following features. You have a, a sketch that's been drawn of the area, and then you have to match up that area onto the map and identify the various features. So to remember that the map is exactly the same, sorry, the exam paper on the right hand side, it has the exact same dimensions as what you find in the exam. And that's really important to help you, okay? And so I would like you, when you do this, to draw on maybe with a highlighter or something like that, or a pencil, the, the, the square in the area in which you are focused on. That helps you to, gives you a clear focus of where to identify the various features. And then once you've done that, you find where A, B, C, D and E are, and again, maybe a little circle just to help you with that. So once you go through them, it's really important that you match up carefully. So for example, feature A is this one. It is a red line, and the red line in this case is a main road. So I will copy exactly what is written, and in this case, it's the main road. If we move on, feature B, it says FB. So I'm going to go to the general features. FB is a footbridge, and again, I'm going to write that name of the river C. So the focus is on the river. So I'm looking for a blue squiggly line and need to identify the river. And so we've got Kelburn Glen. And here I need to identify the land use at D. So you can see there is some um, vegetation there. So I'm going to look at the vegetation. I'm going to copy exactly what has been written. So coniferous trees. And then here, the height above sea level of the spot height at E, survey height at E. And so that gives me a focus, right? So I need the air survey height. That's why it's written in brown. So that is there. Okay, so I'm looking for the number, which is 344. I'm going to write that. In. And so after I've checked all my answers, taking particularly care, I can see that I've got them correct. So moving on, another very common question. Typically, these, these tend to be grouped together. Uh, they ask you to calculate the distance along a particular feature, in this case, a rose, the bearings, and they could also ask for the direction as well, so north, south, east, west. So I take the first one. So for this, you need your protractor and ruler. And this is why drawing on the compass that I told you to draw on from the start is really useful. So the first bit, okay, you need to remember that you need to work out the distance. Remember, 
one centimeter on the map is 250 meters, so a grid square is a kilometer. So for this, I'm going to identify where feature A is, and sorry, where the start point is, and where the end point is, and then measure and then divide up the map into particularly particular straight parts. So you can see I've got these areas here, and that's going to help me when I place my ruler onto the map to work out the distance between each part, add them all together, and then do the conversion. So here I can see I've got my start point, I'm going to do the first one here. So I'm going to measure that again, and so we got 3.5 centimeters. I'm going to measure the distance between here, and although it says uh, 1.8 on my ruler, I'm going to round up to two because you can see that I've got the bend in the in the road, slight bend in the road, which I'm not taking into account. So I'm going to call that two centimeters. Next one, we measure that again, and we've got uh, 3.3, 3.9. Sorry, not reading that properly. So we've got 3.9 centimeters. And then here we've got 3.2 centimeters. So once, okay, so I calculated all those centimeters, and what I'm going to do is add those four distances together to give me 12.6 centimeters. Now I know that four centimeters from my scale represents on the map represents one kilometer in real life. So I'm going to divide that 12.6 by four, and that gives me 3.15 centimeters. Because the question is in meters, I need to times that by a thousand to determine the number of meters, so 3,150. I'll put that into the answer, and then you can see here that goes neatly within the degrees of tolerance. So the next question is looking at the bearing. So I've got my start point, I've got my end point. I'm going to rub out the lines, the straight lines, so I'm just focusing on that. So because I'm going from the parking in grid square 2158 to the parking in grid square 2357, that is my end point. So I'm starting on the left and going to the right. I'll draw a straight line. I'll draw a little north arrow going directly up from the start point, take my compass, put naught bearings on north, and measure off the distance of the bearing, sorry, which is 102 degrees. Now, if the question was asking me to work out the direction as well, because I have my compass drawn with all the bearings, I put on 102, and I know roughly that the direction is somewhere between east or east southeast, and so I would probably get marks for writing either one of those. And you can see here the answer, yep, 102 degrees, perfect, perfectly within the area of tolerance. Here the question is asking me to describe the distribution of the trees to the south of the, this A road. So here's the A road, and I'm going all the way to the south of this red line that you can see on the screen here. Okay, the line I had to measure the distance along. So when I'm talking about distribution of something, I'm talking about how, uh, how, you know, what effects and how the vegetation is spread out. So I'm, I'm focusing on basically how the vegetation has been spread out underneath this road. So to do that, I need to decide, is it being spread out evenly or unevenly? Does it follow a road, river or valley? Where is it densely or sparsely distributed? And is there anything found at a particular height? So if I have that kept on going, I might write something like, well, the vegetation is unevenly distributed. It's not a rectangle. It is not spread out in the same shape. It is all over the place. Therefore, it has to be unevenly distributed. There's no um, vegetation to the north of the road. So therefore, I can say it's bounded by the road to the north. And it tends to be more densely dense, uh, more densely distributed towards the west and south. There's no to the east. Of the, um, of the road here to the east side of the map, it's mainly found to the west and south parts of the map. map. So when I put an answer, you can see that, yep, yeah, that is all correct. So again, look at the map. I tell me if it's spread out evenly or unevenly. Generally, that's always one mark. Most of the time, it's probably unevenly distributed. Does it follow a road, river, or valley? Or is it bordered by a road, river, or valley? Where is it densely or sparsely distributed? And is it found at a particular height? So here's a common question that can be asked. Uh, using the map extract, identify three services provided for the population in the town of large. Do not include tourist attractions. So this question can either be three tourist services or three, in this case, normal services. But what we really mean by this is things that are used by the people already living in the town. So for this, we need to look at general features. And when you look at the general features that you can see here, I might be tempted to draw a little box around. You can see here in the bottom right, all of the various services that are used by people. So you're looking at evidence for this on the map. So you can put there as a fire station. There is a school. But what's interesting, sometimes services aren't actually mentioned here. So for example, you will see in the map a HOSP. 
Nine times out of ten, something like that stands for hospital. In case you think it's a large town, what could be there? <coughs> and so a hospital is one. Okay. So again, anything. So again, look at the identified. Look for evidence and just write them down. And you can see here, all of these are services used by people. So library, for example, is not being used there. Uh, public conveniences, toilets is not marked on. So quite sometimes you have to sort of um, look for other clues as well. So just study the map and match them up. If failing that, just use what's already written here and just find evidence for what's already put underneath general features. And so let's finish off this exam paper. Find the main river, the Gogo water, in the north of the map. Describe the physical features of the river and its valley. So here we've got the Gogo water and I've zoomed in there. So when it comes to the first part, which is looking at the physical features of the river, you first of all need to consider landforms. Where's the source? Where's the mouth of the river? Does the river have meanders? Are there tributaries? In this context, you can see what well, the river ends with a mouth in the sea and the source is towards the eastern part of the map. So you can say the direction goes from east to west. There are bends in the river, therefore there are meanders, and there are lots of sp uh, small thin blue squiggly lines joining the main river, so therefore there are tributaries. You can also consider the Bradshaw model. So you're only looking for evidence that you can see on the map. You can see the width of the river. And generally you can see that it's very thin in the east and gets wider in the west, so the width certainly increases. It is variable width. And because you can again see very steep contour lines in the east and it gets flatter as we move towards the sea, Therefore, the, that helps us to show the gradient and how that changes. So again, it goes steep in the east, flatter in the west. And so from that, again, like I mentioned, you can talk about the direction of flow and if the valley around the river is steep or flat. So with those three things that you need to consider, landforms, the Bradshaw model, and other sort of characteristics, we can say something like the river flows from east to west. In the east, the land is steeper and gets flatter towards the sea. The river also widens. The river meanders and meets lots of tributaries. It has some waterfalls. So for the next part, we need to consider the physical features of the valley. So for this, we need to decide, are the slopes around the river or stream steep or flat? Is the valley V-shaped or U-shaped? And where is it steep and flat? So once we factor these in, we can see, okay, well, definitely in the east of the, east of the map, it's much steeper, there's very steep slides, sides either side of the river, therefore it has to be V-shaped and becomes more U-shaped the closer we get to the sea. So the valley is steeper and narrow in the east, forming a V-shaped valley. As the river flows west, the valley sides become less steep and the valley floor flattens. So once we combine, so I've written my two paragraphs in, and when I compare that against the mark scheme, you can see Yes, fantastic. We've got all those points and more. And remember that although it doesn't particularly say in this mark scheme, other mark schemes will say that you need at least two points in each. Because this question's out of seven marks, I would suggest that you try to have three different points, observations in each part, and then a fourth one extra. So thank you for watching. Um, remember, draw any boxes or lines from the figures of the exam paper onto the A3 map. Draw and compass with bearings, identify the scale and contour line interval. And if you do that before all you before you start, you then it'll help you take the rest of the exam slowly. You have lots of time to complete this and practice. These skills can be applied to any exam paper. So please do use this to help you answer other exam papers. I've got other videos that talk about other, that help you work, work through other exam papers to help you. So please check those out. And if you think this video is really useful, please do like, leave a comment. And if you think your friends at school or in other educational establishments would find this particularly useful, do share that. Thank you for watching.